This is an astrotometry log. This is September the 16th, 2008. <clears throat> and I want to try to articulate some of the ideas, some of the concepts that I've been going over in the process of preparing a visual aid for the concept of hypertime as it relates to the chronocentric model, specifically how it relates to the structure or the perceived structure of our nearest star, the sun or soul, S-O-L. And this is the big, big shift in astrotometry. This is the thing that is kind of the, um, the earth moving, um, no pun intended, uh, issue with the, with the theory and its implications. And to visualize this, to understand visually what the implications are is in a sense impossible because it requires more than three dimensions. In other words, you can't draw a picture of it because it has more than three mappable dimensions. In astrotometry, the sun, the physical object that we observe as the sun, isn't actually a three-dimensional object. It's a, a multi-dimensional object, and what we see is a shadow in the third dimension. We see a, a three-dimensional shadow that we have called the sun, and we've studied it intensely since we first noticed it back when we crawled out of the slime. And the, um, the, the, the details about it, the, the truth, the higher truths about what it is and how it relates to the Earth are very difficult to understand. They're very mysterious, some of them. And astrotometry is a scientific way to approach that, uh, that thing that has been the realm of mysticism for, for so long. And the details about the mapping are fairly specific in astrotometry. The, the, what is likely the case with that shadow mapping, the, the, the shadow of the, the hyperdimensional uh, uh, center of time. And in astrotometry, the sun is the primary time axis. The sun is the primary axis of time. So the uh, Earth doesn't really spin on its axis as much as it uh, transforms, is translated through time across the uh, the primary time axis, which we perceive as the sun. And so to talk about this three-dimensional object that we see and why it has the properties it does, uh, therein lies all of the validation for the theory of astrotometry that I think will be required by even the um, sternest scientists. Um, when we look at the uh, structure of the sun, it has several very, very odd, very, very odd um, characteristics. One of them being that the equator of the sun seems to spin at a different speed than the poles of the sun. The amount of time it takes the sun to turn on its axis, if that's what is actually happening, um, is varies depending on what part of the sun you're looking at and it also varies um, in a sense with season and so there's a there's a mystery there and in astrotometry the sun is understood to be many dimensions of the earth and so if you can imagine you know just shadow use the shadow metaphor if you take the movement on the earth if you take everything that's moved on the earth in a moment and you translate it to where the sun is and then you make a composite of that translation for the next moment and you just keep doing this with composite compositing until you have an entire year's worth of the earth in one place in other words all of the movement on earth in a sense over the course of a year is reflected in the structure of the sun and so there's a there's a uh, a component relationship between the sun and the earth that is a, that is a sort of um, that it's a sort of uh, a mapping problem for our conceptual um, for our conceptual issues and if you notice the um, one of the things that 
I will be making a video about uh, soon one of the applications of astrotometry that I've already started exploring um, actually quite a few years ago is the relationship between the sunspot and the um, the the uh, center of uh, storms on the earth uh, specifically storms over water on the earth there there seems to be a correspondence between the eye of the hurricane or the cyclone or the um, 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 typhoon depending on where you are and the uh, sunspot there seems to be a, a correspondence a correlation and the past uh, two two years when we were at the at the, the dead of the solar minimum I predicted very weak hurricane seasons uh, when the uh, the NOAA uh, for example was was pre predicting very very active seasons because of the warmer water but even though the conditions were right for a very active season um, for two years um, there there were uh, very few hurricanes and uh, cyclones and typhoons and I think this is related to the to the the sunspot cycle and if you look at where the sunspots occur on the sun if you look at the the um, the polar coordinate of the sunspot there's almost a correspondence to the, the the polar coordinates of where hurricanes can form of where cyclones and typhoons can form on the earth so that correspondence already exists and in astrotometry the, the most likely explanation for the reason that the uh, the equator of the sun spins at a different speed than the poles of the sun is that the earth is tilted on its axis and what you're what we're seeing is a different the, the different rotational bands that represent different different times and they're all they're all uh, composited together and so they're are these um, undulations that exist in the the um, day and night on the earth the 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 phenomenon of day and night on the earth is actually also represented in the granular nature of the surface of the Sun and so there's this this lower frequent or higher frequency granulation that happens on the surface from the spin so the the primary frequency the primary time uh, is a year. You've got the, the primary time axis is, is a year and then the, the, other, the other axes would be like the day and the, the, the cycle of the moon. And so the, the, the moon, the, the lunar cycle also creates uh, perturbations that correspond to the actual length of the uh, what would be technically the solar day, the amount of time it takes for the sun to spin on its axis corresponds to the moon and would so uh, more um, more precisely if you consider uh, the the, uh, the the course of the year in other words in the 28 day period that it takes for the moon to go around the Sun the Sun is made a partial uh, rotation around the, uh, the the earth has made a partial rotation around the Sun and so um, in that partial rotation, there is the extra amount of time that it takes for the solar day, uh, which is, uh, I think, about 30, 33 days, 35 days on the, on the equator. And so um, this mapping is very real. And so this, you know, this, isn't, this is not something intangible. And, you know, it is not at all unlike the, uh, the discovery of the phases of Venus um, in support of the heliocentric model in its um, rigidity, in its rigor, uh, in support of astrotometry. And so there's a lot of, th there's a lot of scientific um, ground for this that I've discovered since I, um, since I came to understand astrotometry. And, you know, the more I look, the more I find. And it's, that makes it very difficult to, uh, to publish what I've already got because I just keep finding more and more, and um, that's what this log is about.